Well, welcome everyone uh, to the uh, 2021 Western Neuropathy three-day virtual conference from May the 12th through the 14th via Zoom. My name is Daryl O'Sullivan and I'm on the board of directors for the Western Neuropathy Association. And on behalf of the association, I wanna welcome you to our annual conference. Uh, each of the three days of the conference have a special guest speaker for the first hour. And then the second hour, we will have, we'll be, have a uh, sort of a group discussion, we'll talk about neuropathy and how it affects you. And you can also tell us about how it's affecting you know, the, your day-to-day -day lives and things. So we'll be facilitating this uh, each, you know, each day by a board member and it will be introduced by various board members so you get to know some of the board members. Uh, just to give you an overview for the conference, if you haven't already seen it, I'm pretty sure you have, but today we'll be hearing from Dr. Nolta from UC Davis. Uh, she'll be talking about stem cells. And then we'll have a group discussion at, called, Where in the World Are You? And on day two, tomorrow, we'll start again at, at one, uh, Western, uh, 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 West Coast time. And um, we'll talk to, or will hear from Dr. Manisha, Ma Manisha Korb from UC Irvine, and she'll talk about approaches to diagnosing um, neuropathy. And then uh, our second hour will be a group discussion uh, that will talk about uh, how, you, how, we, how you help yourself with neuropathy, how you get through some of the pain and things. And then on day three, we'll hear from Barbara Montgomery, and she'll be talking about nutrition. And the second hour will be a gentle yoga for all of us. So that sort of covers the overall view of the conference for this next three days. But also I want you to be aware that this week is a neuropathy awareness week. And I want to encourage each of you to tell someone you meet or talk to about your neuropathy so that they understand that what you're going through. So um, is Karen on now? So I'd like to introduce Karen, Karen. Let me see. If not, I can go ahead and do and go forward. Oh yeah, let's go ahead, um, Daryl, if you don't mind. Oh okay. Well, I'll, I'll then I will be the, I will be have the honor of introducing uh, <laughs> Dr. Nolta. So it, it was going to be Karen, who was the is the executive vice president of the Western Neuropathy Association and also the executive director of Occupational Therapy uh, Association of California. But Karen is really busy with day to day activities. So anyway, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jan Nolta. Dr. Nolta is a, is a UC Davis professor in the Department of Cell Biology and Human Anatomy at the School of Medicine. She'll be speaking on stem cells today. Dr. Nolta is the director of the stem cell program at the University of California Davis School of Medicine in Sacramento and directs the Institute for Regenerative Cures. She also serves as the scientific director of the large UC Davis Good Manufacturing Practice Facility. And I could go on, but I think, we'll, I, think I will leave the screen to her. And uh, thank you, Dr. Nolta, for joining us. We appreciate your participation. Well, great. Thank you so much for that uh, great introduction. And this um, society is very near and dear to my heart because I uh, myself suffered from neuropathy from um, chemotherapy that I had eight years ago and I'm, I'm still stuck with it. So I just wanted to talk a little bit today about what stem cell therapies are, what's going on, what clinical trials are happening, and what are, what's going on in those clinics that you see advertised that might not be the real deal and wanted to mention some of the things you should look out for. Are you seeing this, the uh, slides okay? It's the, it's the slide view, we never know. Yeah, I, I, you're okay, good. Good. Very good, thank you, okay. So I uh, will just go forward, hopefully. <laughs> it's it seems like it's different every time. There we go. So these are new field, relatively new fields. Um, stem cells, you'll hear about immunotherapy for cancer patients, um, gene therapy, adding a copy of a gene to replace one that's broken, gene editing, doing that more precisely in regenerative medicine, and these new therapies are changing uh, the face of healthcare. These are living medicines, so the cells and the genes and the, the vectors that deliver the genes, they're actually alive and we need to handle them in a specific way. It's not like a pill in a bottle or a um, vaccine on the shelf or in the freezer. It's, um, it's, a, it's a living entity. 
So we need uh, specialized facilities, a high degree of teamwork and expertise to manufacture, formulate, and deliver these new living medicines. And we usually um, keep um, cells for delivery in cryopreservation under liquid nitrogen until we need them. And so I'm very, very lucky to get to direct the UC Davis Institute for Regenerative Cures. We're here in Sacramento at the um, medical school, the uh, medical center. And we um, do a lot of training and we also have a large facility to manufacture the therapies for clinical trials, um, FDA approved clinical trials um, to go to the patients. And this is what our manufacturing room looks like. So um, let's see if I can get, there we go. So when we get um, cells, for instance, from a patient's bone marrow, we'll bring it into this clean room facility. We grow the cells in these incubators that have oxygen and are at the right temperature, um, mimicking your body. And we uh, expand them in uh, maybe in these big, this is a big bag where they'll be expanded and we put in media and protein. And then they can be um, purified and make sure they're clean and uh, delivered to the patient. And so this is um, something um, of which we're, we're very proud of this facility. It started out as a big warehouse that used to be a, a part of the state fair, and now it's this high-tech facility. So we have this good manufacturing practice facility. And um, just saying up front, if you're going to get any kind of a cell therapy anywhere, you wanna make sure that the cells have been manufactured or they're really expanded. We don't create them, we take them from the body, we change them in some way. I'll tell you about the different ways that we do that in a moment. Um, we want to make sure they've been handled in this type of clean room facility. Otherwise, you could be, you know, setting yourself up for infection or, or um, something worse, or the cells could attack you or form a tumor. So you really want to be very careful that people have followed the, um, we call them standard operating procedures, the protocols to handle and grow up and um, uh, manufacture these products. And so we work with many uh, academic and industry partners um, to make these therapies. We currently have, um, actually I didn't update this, we currently have around uh, 40 stem cell and regenerative medicine clinical trials going, over 20 in the pipeline. We do work with uh, peripheral, peripheral artery disease, uh, revascularization. We have a lot of um, neural disorder research going on and um, other types that I will talk about today. Also a lot of uh, sports medicine where we may see patients with different neuropathies. The green arrows um, are those where we're doing clinical trials and then the red, um, we're talking to the FDA to start. So there are different types of stem cells and you'll hear mostly about these embryonic stem cells. Um, they're the ones that have really grabbed, grabbed all the headlines for the last couple of decades when when people hear stem cell research, they immediately think of embryonic stem cells, but we don't actually use those because they were matched to one patient. So we have this thing called the immune system that would reject those cells if they were injected into, into a uh, person. So we use a different type of um, pluripotent stem cell that can make any tissue, that can make nerves, they can make muscle, uh, cells from your organs. Um, we use something called induced pluripotent stem cell that we can make from the patient themselves. And that's a far more interesting field. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Most of the ongoing clinical trials and everything that you'll see in, in those um, clinics that are offering stem cell therapies for a high price are these um, somatic cells that are um, already in our bodies and those will be uh, harvested and expanded. So um, several different types of stem or progenitor cells and I'm uh, going to uh, introduce you to each one. So I mentioned that we really don't use the embryonic stem cells. These are from in vitro fertilization clinics. They could um, form a whole human if they were implanted, they're a fertilized egg. If they were implanted into a surrogate mom rather than being thrown away, they could make a whole human. So they're very, very controversial. Um, we don't use those. Uh, we're using the induced pluripotent stem cells. This is a colony of about a thousand of these little tiny um, pluripotent stem cells, and they can really make any tissue. So it's very exciting. The way we do this, um, we take a little sample of the skin from a patient, and then we get the fibroblasts out of the skin. We grow these out, giving them sugar and protein and all the things that they need to live in a dish or a flask. We then add some genes that will um, basically open their chromatin and turn them back in time so that they they're not um, differentiated and they're not a fibroblast anymore. They can become any tissue in your body. 
And this science is just uh, remarkable that um, the field can even do this. And these then become induced pluripotent stem cells and they're small colonies of um, small undifferentiated cells. We put them into flasks with certain growth factors and proteins and sugars and differenti differentiate them along the way into the tissue that we need. We do characterization and sequencing, study um, disease in a dish from an individual patient. I'll give you an example in a moment, um, what we did with some neurons. And then we can differentiate them and theoretically transplant them back into the patients. Those clinical trials are just starting. They have started with some retina, um, transplant of retinal cells that were made in a dish like this. And um, some heart cells in Japan have been uh, transplanted back into the patient. But this is a very new field, um, just about 15 years old and not a lot of clinical trials with these pluripotent cells, but they have all the potential in the world. They can make, we work in our group with them, um, making tiny little human livers um, from them. We make brain organoids, um, pieces of eyes, all sorts of things. Here's some beautiful neurons that were generated from those cells from a uh, Parkinson's patient. Um, these were generated in the dish and you can see that they have all of their, um, once they're differentiated, they have all of their connections, they um, signal to one another. We can um, chase the electrical signaling across the, across the dish and put an electrical signaling in one and it uh, transfers across the dish to all of its neighbors, you know, just like regular signaling that would happen in your brain so, um, or in your periphery. So it's really, really interesting to be able to make these cells from a specific patient with that patient's DNA, differentiate them into neurons and then study them. We worked on, um, Let's see if I can do this, I'm not sure. Eh, maybe not. Well, we worked on um, some patients uh, that had fragile X and we made um, the induced pluripotent stem cells and then neurons from those um, patients. Oh, now it's not gonna let me go forward, of course. <laughs> there we go. And then we did everything to study them. We started out with fibroblasts from a female patient. Um, made them into these um, induced pluripotent stem cell clones, did neuronal differentiation, uh, studied everything from them, looked at um, synaptic proteins and density and calcium imaging, and made sure that they had normal chromosomes, uh, did all the staining to show that they're um, first pluripotent and then became neurons. And then it was very interesting. What we found out was that these neurons differentiated from the patient that had the disease had the same types of um, disorders that the uh, patients would have. When we made them um, signal, they would um, start to get excited and then they'd stay excited for a long time and then go back down and the patients were suffering from different um, types of epilepsy. And so it was mimicking what the patients had. There's a lot of um, these types of studies ongoing. And so we have a team led by Dr. Uh, Kyle Fink here who's using the induced pluripotent stem cells made from different patients um, who have Angelman syndrome, CDKL5, juvenile Huntington's disease. These are from kids. Um, we can make their neurons. You can't go into the brain and biopsy what their neurons are doing, but we can make them in a dish and we can um, study them. And so it's um, really a, a lot of uh, potential to have this. Wanted to talk about the blood forming or hematopoietic stem cells. Um, this is the oldest stem cell therapy. Um, they began in 1956, even a little bit before my time. Uh, that was with bone marrow transplant. By now, um, hundreds of thousands of uh, lives have been saved. And we do use uh, cord blood and um, stem cells mobile, mobilized into the peripheral blood rather than always going into the bone marrow to get these um, stem cells. So um, let's see, I, uh, I started out working on bone marrow stem cell gene therapy with Don Cohn, who's one of the leaders in that field. We would take the bone marrow or cord blood when the baby was born, add the gene that was broken. Uh, these kids had bubble baby disease or uh, adenosine deaminase deficiency. We knew from prenatal screening that there was, um, and this was 30 years ago when we started this, there was one gene that was broken um, that was, ineffective and that these kids would have absolutely no immune system due to that one enzyme that was broken at adenosine deaminase. We could use a viral shell, um, the shell from a virus to deliver the DNA into the cell and then um, 
do the bone marrow transplant uh, back into the child with the uh, engineered with the engineered bone marrow. And we um, had uh, some success, but we didn't get a lot of the cells marked back then. And this was in uh, this was published in uh, 1995 uh, with Don Cohn, who um, is the leader of the uh, really the leader of uh, stem cell gene therapy. Go forward a few years. I went on to a different career. I, I worked with Don for 15 years, and then I. Uh, went on to um, work with other types of stem cells and Don kept at this now for 30 years and now is really uh, curing children. This is little Evie. She's one of the kids who has had a, a, um, her complete immune system restored by this type of bone marrow stem cell gene therapy. And that's Don, best mentor in the world. And Don just yesterday um, came out with this uh, publication uh, it sounds very fancy, but autologous ex vivo lentiviral gene therapy for adenosine deaminase deficiency. This is putting the broken gene into the bone marrow of the kids and transfusing the bone marrow back into the children. You just put it in the vein and it goes back to the bones. Um, and now um, over 50 children between his trial and one done by their partners in the UK, over 50 kids have been treated. And this is just a really, uh, a really beautiful um, curve. Um, showing that, I can't get this down anymore, but anyway, um, showing that they really had um, no uh, events of infection or problems with the kids in 50 kids followed um, for um, up to 36 months. And so this type of stem cell therapy really is a cure, but it's very, um, it's very specialized. This is not what you're going to get in your corner clinic that's advertising, you know, next to the 7-Eleven, come and get your stem cells. This is done in a hospital. The children are conditioned to receive um, their own bone marrow after it's been modified. You have to use some chemotherapeutic drugs to clear out some of their marrow so that you can get the corrected cells in. And so that's a type of bone marrow stem cell, stem cell therapy that's really working and is curative as our bone marrow transplants in many ways. Um, but again, it's very, it's very uh, specialized. So what's very interesting for us is that uh, microglial cells in the brain come from those hematopoietic or blood forming stem cells. And so the bone marrow, bone marrow transplant with gene therapy that I uh, just described for you for immune system um, actually has a chance to impact some diseases that affect the brain. And so we are working with um, several of these diseases using the same techniques. Um, a trial was done with uh, hematopoietic stem cell gene therapy for cerebral adrenal leukodystrophy. This is a um, disease that uh, mostly boys get, and it's a neurodegenerative um, disease. Um, this trial showed that it was safe and that uh, the boys did not progress further with their disease for several years. Uh, right now, there are 87 clinical trials listed in the USA, and um, this is clinicaltrials.gov which is where you can look for clinical trials that you might enroll for. You put in the term and where you want to look. But right now at 87 listed in the USA for uh, hematopoietic stem cells and gene therapy. And our teams at UC Davis are working toward these um, HSC gene therapies for uh, several diseases that affect the brain and the nervous system. Um, Tay-Sachs disease, lysosomal storage disorders. Um, these can kill uh, children very young, uh, San Filippo, um, Gaucher disease, other types of disease, um, hurlers. Uh, of course, for leukemia and lymphoma, hemophilia, a clotting disorder, sickle cell disease, uh, HIV to provide resistance against um, further viral insult. Um, and then these that uh, affect the brain, the CDKL5 disorders, Huntington's disease, juvenile Huntington's disease, Angelman syndrome, and PPP2 or 5D disorder, also called uh, Jordan syndrome, which is a little less of a mouthful. So um, then the last type of stem cell that I wanted to, to talk about, and I'll go into these in some detail because there are a lot of clinical trials ongoing with these. And if you're being offered a, um, if you're being offered a therapy at a, uh, at a clinic that's not an approved clinic, it is probably this type of stem cell that, to which they're referring. So, I wanted to go into these in some, in some detail. 
So these are mesenchymal or supporting cells. You can see them as the broad flat cells here lining the bone marrow. They um, protect and nourish these, the uh, hematopoietic stem cells that I just discussed. And they can also be called nurse cells and we also call them paramedics. Um, they are reparative adult stem cells. You can get them from bone marrow. I hope nobody's having lunch right now, but um, you can also get them out of adipose tissue from liposuction surgery. And this is what a lot of those clinics do. They take out some uh, liposuction, take out some fat, maybe from your tummy or somewhere, and then clean it up and reinfuse the cells. And so I'll talk about that in a, in a few moments. Uh, we call them the paramedic cells uh, because these are adult stem cells. They can't make an entire tissue like the induced pluripotent stem cells or embryonic stem cells I introduced at the beginning, but they can repair tissues. Uh, they respond to the scene of the injury inside our bodies. If there's a minor ischemic injury or um, we get cut or there's a deep bruise or a bone is broken, they um, will migrate um, to the scene of the damage and they produce healing factors and they can keep the tissue um, alive and get blood flow back to it. And that's, that's really their job in the, in the body. And so we call them the paramedics because they go to the scene of the crime. They do have a strong safety profile in clinical trials. And this is what they look like. I said they rush um, to the area. These uh, red ones are the mesenchymal stem cells and the green are some damaged muscle fibers that we've dissociated and put into a dish. And so you can see the red labeled uh, mesenchymal stem cells crawling around and checking out the other cells. And there are these little red microparticles. They take um, stuff from the inside of themselves and they hand it off to other cells to try to keep the other cells alive. And so you can see, um, I see right here, this cell has put a, a red um, piece of itself into the green damaged muscle fiber. And so we study this in pretty great detail, um, trying to understand what's passed from the mesenchymal stem cell into the damaged tissue. And, um, one of the things that's really exciting is that um, these cells can actually transfer mitochondria or the battery of the cells. Um, that's what generates the energy inside your cells. The MSCs can actually transfer these into a damaged cell by um, what are called tunneling nanotubules. And it's like the stem cell just kind of opens up a gas hose into the other cell and starts pouring these new batteries into the other cell, along with factors and proteins um, to keep it um, alive, alive and happy. And so it's, uh, they're really interesting cells. We do need to learn to um, harvest them in the right way, expand them in the right way, deliver them properly, and um, do the, the legitimate clinical trials. So these are, um, you know, these are paramedics at the scene of an injury. They can really reduce the inflammation so that the tissue can heal. Unfortunately, they're pretty rare. There are uh, one in a million cells in bone marrow and uh, just a slightly more than that in um, fat in the adipose tissue. Uh, we need to isolate and expand them or grow them up to larger numbers in a clean room facility that I showed you at the beginning um, in order for them to be effective. And so um, adipose tissue shown here, um, this is from a uh, gastric bypass. We get um, just samples of that. Um, it also contains these mesenchymal stem cells, but it also contains many other cells. And so what these, um, you know, these offshore or increasingly in the United States clinics do is they take some of this out through liposuction, they spin it down, they take all the oils off and stuff and they get a cell layer, but there are a lot of other cell types and a lot of other stuff in there. Um, they have injected this into people's eyes for blindness and made them more blind. Um, they've injected them into people's bloodstream and caused um, clots and strokes. And so it can be extremely dangerous. There, there's stuff in there that you do not want injected into a wound or in your eye. You just want it to stay in your fat or you want to diet it away. Um, you don't, you don't want to move it to some other part of your body. And sadly, there are um, unregulated stem cell clinics um, that are doing this. And so the FDA has been um, going after them slowly but surely. Um, the clinics have jumped on the, the bandwagon of the successful stem cell therapies that I showed you at the beginning because everybody's excited about those. Um, there's unscrupulous, unscrupulous people going after those of us who are desperate for cures for different things for our kids, for ourselves, um, and advertising they can cure 
autism or um, Alzheimer's um, through injecting these cells. And these are largely cells uh, from fat or taken from somewhere else in your body, but they're not growing them up in a, in a clean room facility. They're just taking them and doing something to them and bringing them back and just injecting into you. And that's you know the cheapest way for them to do it. They're not purified stem cells. Um, anything that you do when you take tissue out of the body, anything that you do that's more than minimal manipulation requires FDA approval and requires the FDA to look at a big pile of paperwork that you have showing that um, what you're going to put back into the human body is safe, clean, and effective. And these clinics um, don't have that and they um, just kind of pop up and they make a lot of money off of people. They charge like $40,000 for these procedures. And then the FDA sends them the cease and desist letter and they shut down and they move to a different place. Um, so they have to, they're supposed to uh, put up a sign that says not FDA approved. Definitely look for that. Um, here's one in, in Rancho Mirage. There, there have been a lot of um, different uh, posts about these, but I just wanted to say, a, you know, a note of caution. There are a lot of them around uh, California. We have some up um, in our area in uh, Sacramento, as far north as Redding. Um, they are definitely around. And so um, Beverly Hills has the highest concentration, interestingly. Um, and, and I have to say uh, for some, for cosmetic procedures uh, like wrinkles and things like that, you might want fat injected. So if you have deep wrinkles in your face, um, they can take some fat from your tummy and uh, put it in there with a little Juvederm or something to hold the cells in there. And you do actually want fat cells in there because they're plump and they're big and round and plump and it can really uh, plump up the tissue, but it's not, it's not growing the skin. It's not healing that skin. And that's the, that's the only case I can think of that these, um, these therapies might be doing uh, something credible. So this is from my friend, uh, Paul Knopfler. He uh, envisions a time when you're just driving up to get your stem cells, <laughs> pretty funny. <laughs> and um, that's really all I was going to say about those clinics. When we have a question and answer, I'm happy to talk about you know people's experiences or questions. I'm always happy to answer on emails. I do have a few more slides, but I'm always happy to answer questions about them on emails. But I did want to tell you, um, you know, a couple of trials that are ongoing. Most of the calls that we get at our institution are for um, osteoarthritis. People have terrible problems with their knees um, and their hips as they age. And um, there are several clinical trials ongoing. Um, the jury's still out. We don't know definitive results. Um, same for peripheral neuropathy. I haven't seen a clinical trial yet that is um, just like a, a landslide success. There are some ongoing that you can find on clinicaltrials.gov. But I wanted to talk about the one um, product and by FDA approved, I mean it is in, um, it can be prescribed and insurance can cover it. So when you get through the phase one, phase two, and phase three clinical trials and it's safe and effective, um, then uh, your doctor can prescribe it for you. But again, it's not just a, a product that you get off, off the shelf like a cement or something that would help your knee. It's um, actual real cells coming from uh, juvenile cartilage. And um, this one is made of your own um, cells from, from the damaged knee. And so this is, um, if you've sustained some kind of defect in your knee, uh, you've crushed it or had a athletic injury, you can see it here. Um, they'll go in and take, take they'll, they'll look at it, they'll go in and take out a biopsy around the damage, and then they grow the cells up um, in one of those clean room facilities. And this is all um, you know, governed by the FDA and following the standard operating procedures. And they regulate everything. They regulate the plastic that touches the cells. They regulate the type of serum that comes from cows that will go into the cell. They have to be USA herds. So we don't get any kind of um, spongy encephalitis or um, bovine, whatever that, that thing is. We, we have to monitor for every single virus out there to make sure there's nothing in the cells. And then it could go back into the patients. 
And clearly at the clinics, that's not happening, but for this product, it is. And so they will uh, grow up the cells, customize it to the size, and then put it in. And uh, they put it in with some fibrin glue and it, it'll stick actually in the bone. And so that's uh, kind of interesting for these. This is the, just the sheet. I'm happy to share these slides if anybody's interested, by the way. There's some links on there. And so that, that is the one um, orthopedic uh, product that uh, for, for osteo, for knee damage, basically, um, that is uh, FDA approved. I'm very lucky to work at the number one vet school. And so we have um, canines and cats that come in with a lot of problems. And those are naturally occurring diseases of our companion animals, also horses uh, that get athletic injuries. And so this is really a paradigm shift that we can take their cells or cells from another animal and test it on them for uh, clinical trials for a certain breed of dog or a certain, you know, a certain type of injury in a certain breed like um, German shepherds with uh, osteoarthritis. Um, and we can actually get enough animals that are either treated or a standard of care that we can do these uh, valid clinical trials. And so it's um, great to be able to do that. We have been doing a spina bifida surgery. So by we, I mean the talented neurosurgeons that work at the UC Davis um, surgical, um, the department of surgery and at the vet school uh, surgical department, they've been treating bulldogs born with uh, spina bifida. And this is where the, during development, the uh, spinal cord is actually protruding um, from the discs in the back. It hasn't closed up properly. And while they're in the womb, it's, the nerves are getting bumped around and damaged. Um, the kids with spina bifida and the dogs are born um, crippled. They can't use anything, uh, you can see where the surgery was done there, they can't use anything downstream from where that neural damage um, occurred. And most of these dogs will be uh, put down at birth when it's found that they can't use their hind limbs. Um, but there are these amazing bulldog um, rescues and we have them here at our Shriners Hospital. Uh, some people that work at Shriners uh, rescue these little puppies and are human and our veterinary neurosurgeons decided to uh, start helping them. And they use um, stem cells on a little matrix to put in after they've um, closed up the defect in the spinal cord. They use um, stem cells on a little matrix to kind of seal it up. They sew up the dura, they uh, put, the bones, put the bones back in, um, sew up the, the skin. And they've now treated about uh, 15 of the dogs. The dogs are walking and running around um, they are still incontinent, interestingly. So the signals um, coming from the nerve saying that it's time to go to the bathroom or to alert someone to go to the bathroom, um, those, those are not intact, but they can stand and walk, which is really, really interesting. And so, um, yeah, this is Arthur. He's just, uh, Arthur, he's just one, one of the puppies that was treated and they're all so stinking cute. Um, this has helped, um, with the data, the safety data for a clinical trial that will be going on. Dr. Diana Farmer here at UC Davis um, will be treating babies diagnosed with spina bifida and she'll be treating them while they're still in the womb, which is amazing to me. Um, they do fetal surgery. They take the um, stem cells on the little patch. They do the surgery to put the uh, nerves back into the spinal cord, put the patch on, um, refill the, I, I asked, you know, what happens to all the, the fluid that the baby's um, floating in, they just put in saline. And they said that the mom refills it with all the electrolytes and everything uh, after they sew it back up. They've done a clinical trial before, but not with the stem cells. And so this will be the first time that there's a fetal surgery using the uh, mesenchymal stem cells on a patch. And those can put in the healing, the healing uh, factors to help that uh, spinal cord regenerate. And so we look forward to when, you know, we can use these for um, coding maybe large uh, conduits of nerves. Um, we know that the MSCs can help with uh, damaged nerves, with getting them the new batteries, the new mitochondria. They make um, nerve growth factor and all sorts of things, uh, brain-derived neuro, neural growth factor, uh, BDNF, um, all sorts of things that keep the neurons healthy. And so 
very excited about those clinical trials that will just get started. And those clinical trials for the humans are being funded by the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. We're very lucky to have those there. So this is just the overview of everything that we do and what should be done before you get a stem cell therapy. Um, you, there should be a lot of people working in labs um, with animal models, and then you get the FDA agrees to let you start the first clinical trial. There's an investigational new drug. That's all the paperwork that I told you about the package that you send in. They then uh, give you approval, uh, clearance to start the phase one. That's like 10 to 20 patients just for safety. Then you go into the phase two, a controlled clinical trial. Phase three will be multi-center. A lot of uh, people, maybe at uh, different um, universities or different hospitals. And then this gets to be an approved uh, therapy reimbursed by insurance. And so with all those clinical trials, um, that whole pipeline of the phase one, two, three, we have a um, alpha stem cell clinic uh, team. And so for outpatient administration of these uh, stem cells and regenerative medicine in the FDA approved clinical trials, and these are the stem cells that are grown in the clean room facility, that's an important distinction um, following everything um, that the FDA recommends. And so the first thing that we did was for um, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, and that has been a successful trial. This is a network of um, clinics throughout uh, California because it's funded by our state stem cell funding agency, um, CERM. And so um, our goal is to deliver the high quality and safe uh, stem cell clinical trials to patients. And these are the only um, cell and gene therapies that are um, approved for prescribing so far. So the field is pretty young. And um, you know the, the clinics are not delivering these, as certainly these are delivered in a hospital. Um, so it's really a pretty short list. Um, a couple of immunotherapies, um, using your body's own, own T lymphocytes to fight a cancer, but expanding them um, and adding a gene to them to target them to the cancer. More and more of these are in clinical trials. Um, there's a one for relapsed melanoma, lymphoma leukemia. There's um, an approved gene therapy for blindness. I talked about the Macy for the damaged knee joints, and then the gene therapy for bubble baby disease, uh, what I talked about with Don Cohn um, with, with the bone marrow transplant, um, approved in Europe and hopefully soon in uh, the United States. And so um, it just really takes a village to think up uh, test, uh, make, uh, formulate, and deliver these cells over to the clinic. Our Alpha Clinic has a what's called a stem mobile to take them from our manufacturing center here in the institute over to the patients in the clinic. And this is our Monday morning meeting every Monday morning. It's virtual right now, but we'll be back together pretty soon. So um, we thank CIRM, who funds um, a lot of our program. Also, uh, private donors will fund different uh, diseases on which we work and uh, some from the National Institutes of Health. And that's me. Uh, I like to tweet. I use it for good, not evil. Um, and uh, we're, <laughs> we're, we're here if you have questions. I, I'm always, I always welcome emails. And I, I think I have some time to answer some questions. I race through that pretty fast. So. Any questions? Well, first off, thank you very much, Dr. Nalton, for a very good presentation and a good overview of what's available and what we should be careful and cautious of. So uh, we want to open up the uh, uh, ch chat to some questions. So um, I have one here that says, uh, of course, one of them comment was Arthur is amazing, which was really cute and very, and very true. So cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So here's one question that says, can you work on patients that have had back, uh, neck, leg, foot, shoulder surgery to help with pain? That is, a, yeah, that is a really good question. Um, we actually have a, and I, I didn't mention it here because it's just not very close to the clinic yet, unfortunately, but we have a collaboration with uh, Bruce Hammock here who works on some interesting molecules that um, deaden the nerves uh, to pain. They're eicosanoids. I don't know the chemistry of them, but we are teaching, we're engineering our mesenchymal stem cells to deliver those. And since they go to the areas of damage, um, right now this is in you know immune deficient mice where we can transplant in the human cells. So we're not even 
in the clinical trials. Um, but you would need to uh, have the cellular therapy um, delivering something to um, deaden that pain locally in the area where, the, where it's happening. The mesenchymal stem cells can reduce a lot of inflammation. So if it's inflammation causing pressure on the nerve, um, they might be able to do that. Um, you know, regrowing the nerves is always a goal. Uh, a lot of people are working on that. Um, yeah. So that, that's uh, what we hope in the future. Um, now, back pain is different. We, we, we and others have, um, you know, the spine center, and they can do a lot of different things, including stem cell injection into the, um, into the vertebra um, to try to uh, cause more cushioning and to try to um, get, get you more relief if the nerves are being pinched there. But that's, that's a different type of pain. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, interesting that we also, um, the Western Neuropathy Association also was worked with Dr. Hammock on some of his new medication that he's working, you know, he's in, they're in clinical trials right now. Yes, We're yes. Very anxious to have that completed so that it would, where hope is, is that it will help with a lot of the pain that we all suffer because it's, it's very excruciating and very, you know, constant. Yes. Uh, anyway, there's another question that came here and it says, are there stem cell uh, possibilities in the pipeline for peripheral neuropathy? There are, and they're in clinical trials. I, I really should have um, tried to dig into those more deeply. I, um, I, I'm not sure, you know, what, what phase of clinical trials they're in. Um, and it, that would be, you know, delivering the cells locally for the anti-inflammatory effect that they can have. And the MSCs really are better than, um, you know, steroids in, in many cases, they can do more than the steroids. Um, but they don't stick around as long as we'd like them to, these mesenchymal stem cells. So we're working out many different aspects of that. Um, so definitely people are working on it, people are thinking about it. It's just, you know, what's gonna be best and what's gonna work best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question says, I saved my son's embryonic stem cells. They are now 11 and 13. Do you recommend I still keep them either for help with neuropathy or something else? So probably um, umbilical cord when they were born. Was it the cord blood? Uh, it doesn't say, but I'm going to, you know, it could be. Yeah. The, um, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, <laughs> so that will, they, those cord blood cells will match them. And, um, you know, if it's not a lot of money to keep them, I, I sure would, because we don't know what we'll be able to use them for in the future. And we can also use those to make the induced pluripotent stem cells. I didn't mention that it doesn't have to be the fibroblast. But think about, you know, your arm goes through all the damage from what you eat. And if anybody smokes or there's, um, you know, toxins in the air or from the sun damage, those cord blood cells are the most pure cells that those uh, sons will ever have and they're banked. And so they will might be needed in the future. I, I would hang on to them personally. I wish I had some, you know, they're, they're completely unadulterated by anything that's happened and they last, we know they're fine for at least 30 years in the freezer. Now you, you. you actually um, have a, a, a cord blood bank, do you not? We partner with cord blood banks. Yeah, we, I run the, um, our, our, our our program, not me personally, but the wonderful people who work with me, um, run the California Umbilical Cord Blood Collection Program. And we partner with different um, hospitals to collect the cord blood instead of throwing it away and then put, put it into the public banks. So the bank isn't right here. Um, it's actually in San Diego. We ship the cord down there. Okay, okay. Um, any other, uh, any other uh, uh, questions? We'll give it just a few minutes here and see if they get any more here. Um, uh, I don't see too much right now, so yeah. we'll. Uh, I think what we'll do is is um, unless something pops up, I'll going to say again, thank you very very much for your time and your expertise and and for sharing information with us. I hope that it helps uh, some of us to understand it a little better and also for us to be a little more. Um, uh, um, careful in terms of how we use some of the things that are out there. Uh, here's a couple of, oh, got a couple, bunch, bunch more now. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay, so let's yeah, go on with a couple more if you don't mind. Sure. Okay, yeah. so here's one that says, is it impossible 
that the Wharton jelly in the umbilical uh, can be a better uh, solution? That's a great question. And um, that's one of the places that we get the mesenchymal stem cells. And so I, I didn't mention that. I didn't mention all the different places that we can get them. But yeah, that's a very young, that's a very young source of cells and they, they grow, they have very long telomeres and they just keep dividing. So that's a, that's an excellent source. Okay. Um, and for, you know, for the question about the clinical trials, although it, it's not my, you know, particular thing that I work on, so I'm not really as up on it as I should be, I would suggest going to clinicaltrials.gov and looking for legitimate places that have, you know, affiliated with a medical center or a university that are running clinical trials. And you can put in, you know, peripheral neuropathy and um, stem cells or gene therapy or uh, wh whatever you want and find maybe one in your region okay. to try Okay, thank you. Um, Sonia, I thought you were showing up your hand. Did you have something you wanted to ask? Because I don't see it in the chat. Maybe it was a clap. <laughs> oh, maybe that's what it was. Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh she I did. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so, so um, you know, now that we have the ability to, um, to check people's genes, their um, look at their DNA to see if they have um, acquired any of the hereditary acquired neuropathies. Um, is there, are you looking at ways for people who, who have these genes, the hereditary genes for neuropathy um, to try and do things proactively for them to help minimize the damage from the hereditary disease? Yeah, that's an excellent question, and other teams are. It's not my um, it's not my particular specialty, but anytime that we can pinpoint a gene that's going to cause trouble downstream, um, there can theoretically be a gene therapy developed to um, stop the effects of that gene. And so, what um, another thing I didn't really have time to get into because it's a gene therapy talk rather than a stem cell talk. But um, there's a ano associated vector, and it's a very small little virus and it's used to carry many types of genes and it's injected into the bloodstream and it's being used for all sorts of diseases now, um, hemophilia. And so I, I would imagine that that would be the best one for this and maybe for um, delivering some of, the, some of the things that might combat the pain because that can be injected locally. It just um, one time infects your cells. It doesn't, you know, course through your body and keep, um, you know, like, like HIV or something, it doesn't keep replicating. It's just a one-way delivery. And so there are people working on different modulators um, for different specific diseases. And this, this field is moving really fast. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for your talk today. Good luck, yeah. yeah and thank you. Thank you. Uh, ah, hey, I think that's probably where we're at for right now. Um, Again, I want to say thank you very much for your time and, and for the information. We really, we really appreciate uh, your participation. Please have a wonderful day. Thank you. We'll I enjoyed it. I will. have an evaluation will. at the end for each of the speakers. So we'll, we'll sort of try thank to keep you. you up to date on that. All right. All thank right. you. Thank you all. Have a great uh, day. All right. Bye -bye. You too. Bye-bye. Okay. So, Catherine, I hope you're ready. Are you there? <laughs> so I think that uh, we're going to now, um, any other questions or comments that anybody has that they'd like to ask about the conference in general before we move on to the next um, hour? Okay, so I think- I have a question. Gonna, Oh, okay, go ahead. <clears throat> How does one uh, uh, get those slides that she presented? The slides are very nice. Yeah, um, we are recording the this, and so that the office, the Western Neuropathy Association uh, office, will have the recordings, and we'll probably you'll have to request it through the office, and maybe perhaps through Bev, uh, and I'm sure that we can share some of that information because we'll put a lot of this online for you to be able to view anyway. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, Daryl. Also, just wondering, you have video locked for everybody, but not the audio. Is that by design or just accidental? <laughs> Um, maybe, maybe Lindsay's going to be taking care of that. I'm sure she's in the background working too. 
yeah, turn we can all of our videos on. Yeah, if you want to request video, um, I can do that. Just let me know and I can um, allow video for whoever wants to be on camera. What, why don't you just let everybody get back on while we're going into the second hour? Sure. Yes, yes. So that let me, would be great. So as we go into the second hour, let me just say um, I want to introduce Catherine Stencils. Catherine uh, is, a, is a member of the Western Neuropathy Association Board of Directors, and she's the leader of the Western Neuropathy Association, the Houston Support Group. So we have an affiliation with uh, people in Houston, Texas, and a number of other places in the country. So, and, and, and Catherine is a new member of the board, and we want to say thank you very much for joining the board. We look forward to many years of, of, of participating with the people in, in Houston and also associating back and forth and, and, and learning and helping each other. So Catherine, it's, I'll, I'll give you the, the floor, and it's up to you for now. Okay. So first, let's everybody start turning your video on. You don't necessarily right now have to turn your audio on, but this is supposed to be our social hour. So we're supposed to be social and seeing everybody. Awesome. So while you're all doing that, I'll, I'll start talking a little bit. So as you've heard for our second hour, for our social hour, we're gonna be seeing where everybody lives and learning a little something about your town or your area. Now, as all the attendees are talking about their towns, make notes of the people that live near where you are. You'll be able to contact these people during, um, during the Zoom session by going to chat. You can find their name in the chat session you can send them, in, uh, send them a chat and ask them if y'all would like to exchange emails. You can talk then about your common symptoms, maybe get together for a cup of coffee. If there's enough people that um, we find today that are in one area, maybe you wanna go off and start your own support group. So the Western Neuropathy Association has all kinds of materials that we can help with that. We have materials that can help for somebody that wants to be a leader and we can just have we have materials that you can help to use for your support group so just think about that as you're seeing where all the people are from today and remember that you have control of how your zoom window looks so we have right now we have 32 around 32 people on on my screen I have actually two pages now with people. So there's a little arrow on the side of my screen that I can click that takes me from one set of pictures to the second set of pictures. You can also choose to view in gallery view, which is what mine is on right now. So I have everybody's little pictures on here. Or you can choose to view in speaker view. And you can change that by going up to your upper right hand corner of your screen where it says view, clicking on that, and you can go from speaker view to gallery view, whichever one you want to be in. When you're in speaker view, it's going to be me taking up the screen and then the next person that speaks. And when you go to gallery view, it's going to be all the little bitty tiny squares. And the person that speaks has the little bitty yellow um, what border around you. Also, if you want to, and I just found out this today, if you want to have a lot of fun, you can actually move these video windows. You can click on a window and you can move it anywhere you want to. Now, I'm going to have some of my helpers be doing that today to help me keep track of which people I talk to. So I do have two helpers with me today. Jeff Diet is my husband. He's going to be one of my helpers. He's going to help mostly when I give out door prizes. And Jeff's not going to turn his video on, but, but he's there. He's actually in the dining room, just right over there. And then the second person is Brian Lockhart. And Brian's, there's, there he is. He's waving. So Brian is a member of the Houston Support Group. And he's going to help me keep track of the people so that we can make sure we get to uh, talk to everybody today. Okay, let's see what else is on my notes. Okay, we're also going to be doing door prizes. So we're going to be giving out three different door, three door prizes. And I'm going to kind of um, 
intersperse them throughout our time together. What we have is we have a book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, uh, Inspiration for Teachers, I believe is the title of it. And I know we're all familiar with this series and it actually has a story in there by our president, Bev Anderson. And then we also have a DVD called Coping with Chronic Neuropathy. Um, what is it? Gene Richardson's story about his um, journey with this disease. So those are what we'll be giving out as door prizes. Okay, so I think what we're going to do to get started, just to give us an idea of where everybody is from, is I'm going to start with a poll. So I am going to launch this poll. You should be seeing this on your screen. And the, in general, I know that most of the people here are from California. We also have some from Oregon, Nevada, Texas. And I also know we have some others out there. I saw, saw Diane, who's from North Carolina. I almost put yours on there, Diane. Um, and I know we've got Virginia, I think. And we'll just have to do y'all separate. So just find your state and click on there. I can, uh, oh, another person from North Carolina and Arizona, did I, oh, okay, well, that's good. And, and we'll get to know uh, where you're from when we do everything individual, but thank you for letting me know. That was pretty good. All right, we've got 31 people here and we've had eight and six is 14 and two is 16, so come on. Everybody else vote. Mm -hmm. Everybody else vote. So far we have eight people from California, three people from Nevada, three people from Texas, and two people from other. So I know the people that are on the phone, y'all can't vote, so we'll find out later where you're from. But everybody else, you voted. Okay, I'm going to end the polling and we'll just share the results. So y'all can kind of get an idea. Can you see the results on the screen there? Yes, thank you. Oregon. Yeah, nobody from Oregon. Where did our Oregon person go? I expected. But um, three pe people from Nevada, three from Texas, and then some people from the rest of the place. Okay, so that just gives us, I am in South Bay. South Bay, is that, what state is that in? Massachusetts. California, Silicon Valley. Oh, it's in California, oh, okay. Oh, and I'm based South Bay in, in case, oh, for other areas. Oh, for other areas, <laughs> case of other areas. Okay, so let's go start so i'll start with myself right katherine stenzel now you would think that i would be from houston since i'm the leader of the houston support group actually i'm from cyprus texas so cyprus is a little bitty bedroom community community right on the northwest side of houston and there there i there's nothing here but just houses everywhere but then if we wanted to talk about Houston, as Bev always tells me to say something positive about where I live. And she's the one that gives me the idea for this. And that is, of course, we have NASA here. And of course, we have the, um, visitors, the Visitor Space Center, which is really kind of a cool thing to see. And my husband and I did go there about three years ago. And they've got that huge 747 in there. And they just got a bunch of stuff. So if you come to Houston, you do have to go down there and visit. All right, so I'm gonna say, all right, Bev, because you're next and because you're unmuted, Beverly, not Beverly, Bev, <laughs> where are you from? I'm from Colfax, California. And Colfax is, fam uh, our claim to fame in a way is that we were a main, a, a main area of the West of when they were doing the Transcontinental Railroad and of uh, People, the uh, where I live is halfway between Gold Run, I mean uh, Colfax, and uh, uh, 
Alta and, and Dutch Flat. And Dutch Flat had the, the brass, the top guys lived there. And the workers for the Trail Rick Railroad uh, lived in Colfax. But Colfax is named for the vice president of Ulysses S. Grant's vice president, who when the Transcontinental Railroad was put in, he came through on a train and actually stopped at this little burg that just recently went over a thousand people in this town, uh, but uh, and did his um, a speech and they needed the name for the town and they thought, okay, we'll do that one. So that's, and now we have the reconstructed railroad station looking like it used to and, um, and it's um, and a statue of Schuyler Colfax in the little park around it. Wow. Well, I have certainly learned more than I never ever knew about your town. That, that is really very interesting. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go do the people with videos first. So Shirley of Shirley's iPad, you wanna unmute yourself and tell us where you're from? I, that, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now, great. This is my first time doing Zoom, number one. <laughs> and um, from you're last right. day. And um, I am also kind of new to the neuropathy group and um, I am seeking help. So this is what I'm hoping to receive within the next couple of days as well. Awesome, awesome. We're so glad you found us and would there'll be other information that we'll be giving out as far as you know our website and things like that that you'll be able to use even after you leave here. Yeah. So what town, where are you living in? Las Vegas. Ah, Las Vegas, one of the Nevada people. Okay. Yeah. So Bever Beverly, when is the um, the Nevada support group gonna be? Well, it's the third Thursday and we have a Zoom meeting now. I started a Zoom group for, for Nevada. And so anybody that it's in the newsletter and if you don't get the newsletter, send me your call, call me and I'll email it to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that is awesome. And so what, what part of Nevada are you in to where you can teach us something about your area? She's in Las Vegas. And where she is? Oh, no. Oh, she's in Las Vegas. Is that what you told me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm in Las Vegas. I'm in Sun City, which is a senior community in Las Vegas in Summerlin. Okay, I got it. Thank and, uh, you. Barbara, who is the head of our group here, will be um, speaking on Friday under this uh, National uh, well, Western Neuropathy Association. That's right. She's our Friday morning speaker. I mean, Friday first hour speaker. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Shirley. So, so glad to meet you and glad you found us. Thank you. Okay, Barbara, since you're right underneath and since you're from the area too, Absolutely. It's nice to be here. It's nice to see everyone. And Shirley, it's great to see you and hear from you. Uh, Las Vegas is a beautiful state. The weather is great right now. Um, we have hiking, we have boating, we have um, the casinos, we have the shows, we have uh, ghost towns, and uh, we have just a, a lot of great things here. I'm in Sun City as well, and uh, Sun City Summerlin. We have a lot of activities, a lot of groups, and uh, that's where we held the uh, Las Vegas Neuropathy Group until COVID hit. And uh, so things changed a little bit, but I'll be looking forward to seeing everybody on Friday. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Good to see you, and we'll we'll hear all about nutrition on on Friday. Awesome. All right. So, Diane, since you look like you were getting ready to talk, why don't you tell us? I know that you're from North Carolina. <laughs> Wait, you got to unmute yourself. Yes, you I, I live in um, Asheville, North Carolina, Asheville. in the western part of the state, and we're in the. Um, the lower part of the mountain areas, and it's just a beautiful area. 
Um, we really love, really love it here a lot. The, the mountains are very accessible. Um, they're, they're very different than mountains like the Colorado Rocky Mountains because the mountains here are, um, they don't really have a tree line, but they're very lush and very green, a lot of rhododendrons. And we can go within like about a hour's drive and be at a waterfall. But we also love Asheville too. It's just kind of a, a fun city. And you know, there are a lot of people moving here from California. Um, <laughs> New York, New Jersey, but I think there's a lot of people from other states moving into a lot of other cities too, um, not just here, but yeah, we are having a lot of outstate people. Um, I bet. Well, Asheville's for years has been like one of the top 10 areas for retirement. So yeah, I would really love to go there. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Okay. And um, I always knew you're from North Carolina. I just didn't know that you were from Asheville. So let's do a door prize. Now, how we're going to do the door prizes is we've picked the dates that um, are uh, of the states that most of the people that belong to the Western Neuropathy Association belong to. So we're going to pick, we picked the dates that those states entered the United States. All right. Does that make sense now? So I'm gonna do Texas first, of course, because that's my state. And just for a little history lesson, Texas was the 28th state to join the union. And they joined the union on, well, it doesn't really matter what date they joined the union because we never celebrate that date. We celebrate the date that we declared our independence from Mexico and we created the Republic of Texas. And that is March 2nd, and that is Texas Independence Day, and that is a state holiday. So who has a birthday that is on or around March 2nd? I notice all the hands going up. Bretta, do you have one? Do you? What day? You have to unmute yourself. Everybody needs to be. Uh, 18th of February, it's not very close you may have someone closer so the end of february so well hey you know that's close anybody else march 2nd anybody? no what? Uh, there's, uh, uh, every, everybody uh, unmute yourself yeah let's get everybody unmuted so you okay don't there we go that. i think everybody Looks like they're unmuted now. Shatter, did, did you have your hand up? Yes, uh, February 21st. February 21st. Yes. 21st or 31st? 20, no, no, 21st. That, not 31st. February 31st. February 31st. <laughs> <laughs> that would be not bad. <laughs> I just wanted to hear the, I wasn't quite hearing. <laughs> yeah, um, anybody else? And, and so, Bretta, what, what date were you in February? 18th, 1-8. Oh, 18th. Oh, Chatter looks like he's closer. I think Anybody so. else in March on the other side of March 2nd? And, and I can't see, um, I can't see everybody. So I don't see anybody else having their hands up. Okay. okay. Chatter looks like he's the winner of our first door prize. Yay. Good. Thank you. And it, so, um, are you, forgive me for asking, are you a member of the Neuropathy Association? Yes. You better so be. then we would have your mailing list in our records. Yes. He's okay. the leader of the San Diego group. Well, obviously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. I don't know all this, but yes. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So now we're going to continue. Well, Chatter, since we were talking to you, so why don't you go next? Uh, my name is Chatter Kucheria, and I'm the uh, group leader for the San Diego uh, group. Unfortunately, we have not met in person or virtually for uh, 14 months now. Uh, I do get a call once in a while and I do help the people when I get the call. Uh, but uh, 
maybe I'll talk to Bev separately how to start the virtual meeting in San Diego because it was a very successful meeting. We had for about one year and we had uh, 30 to 40 people attending the meeting uh, wow. continuously right now. Uh, so, uh, and how much I can say about the San Diego, it's a, one of the very, very beautiful city, uh, nice weather, uh, mountains, uh, ocean, uh, very nice weather. And uh, unfortunately it's a dry, uh, and this year, whole California has been dry also. Uh, can I talk about one of the tests I got done uh, recently? And uh, maybe uh, Bev can make a comment on that. Uh, sure. I got a, a nerve conduction test done about a month or two months ago. And my doctor told me that uh, this will detect only if I have the large nerve problem. Uh, and he also said that most likely I have a small nerve issue so that the test would not detect that. So, and it, it came out exactly that way. He said, you know, I don't see any problem with the large nerve and the small nerve problem cannot be detected by the test. So Bev, you want to make comment about that? Anything? And the, your axons, the axons, the large nerves are myelinated and the small fibers at the end are, right. are not myelinated. So the test, the electrical test, basically does the myelinated nerves. Okay. And, and that's the first person, I, doctor, I've heard that will admit that that doesn't do that. So that's really congratulations to that doctor. But did he suggest that you do the, the punch test? No, he didn't say that. And he also said that it's a somewhat good news because if you had a problem with the large nerve, then I start losing balance and other issues. So, so they most likely said uh, the problem is with the small nerves. Uh, so that was his comment was, you know. Small, small fiber and you, you want to do the pinch test and which is a biopsy and they do three biopsies. Um, tomorrow we'll talk more about it because Mario is here, he just had one. And okay. uh, he can tell you about that. But uh, San Diego, UC San Francisco, UC San Diego has a, a medical center, right? Uh huh. It does. Uh, and uh, we can talk a little bit. Uh, I'll look to see what neurologists they have. I haven't. I haven't. That's one of the things I'm doing is I'm checking the hospitals, medical centers as to what neuromuscular neurologists they have. And tomorrow. We have Dr. Korb from UC Irvine, who does, who is a neuromuscular neurologist and deals with a lot of different things. So she'll be really good help for us. Great. Okay. Thank so today you. We're going to, we're, today we're saying, where in the world are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We'll get to the more specifics um, on on the uh, on neuropathy things uh, tomorrow afternoon. Okay, so let's go back to where we are. So since um, Bev mentioned Mario, Mario, you're next on my pretty pictures. So where are you living? So I live in Manhattan Beach, California. Uh -huh. And it's very much like uh, San Diego in many respects. And we're near the ocean. Um, I'm walking distance to the ocean. Of course, the mountains aren't that far away. A lot of amusement parks. Uh, Great weather, however, gloom and doom here. Uh, gloomy weather has has has, has been uh, been with us for quite some time now. We're looking for uh, sun to break through. But if you like ocean sports, Manhattan Beach, as well as San Diego, is a place to go. Uh, the nice thing about this area, of course, is that if you like to ski, or you like to surf, you can do it all in one day. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we're not that far from the ocean. Like I mentioned, we're not that far from the airport. So pretty well centrally located for many, many things. A lot of things here. Um, name any amusement park, you probably could make it uh, in a short period of time from, from Manhattan Beach. Okay. So huh? uh, yeah, so it's a great place to live. Uh, I, 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 started, I, I, uh, I bought here in 1985, so I've been here quite some time. Wow. 
and it's gone from a sleepy little ocean community to something much bigger than that now. I have to say I liked it the way it used to be. <laughs> a little, a little like, more, a little when more it was intimate. smaller. Yeah, a little more intimate, a little more uh, affordable. But if you moved in early, you, uh, you made a good move. <laughs> that's so, good. Uh, yeah, cool. that's about it. Great, thank you. Uh, Okay, so how about CJ? Hello. Hello. So my name is CJ Olenek, and I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, I um, right around here, um, there are some, let's see, we have a downtown that has somewhat of a nightlife. And that's one thing I like about Charlotte, but um, due to the uh, pandemic, there hasn't been any, any nightlife. And um, my wife and I aren't comfortable yet uh, going out, but I'm hoping things will get better and some of the music venues will reopen. So lots of um, live music going on there usually? There is. That's there is. It's a uh, pretty nice uh, scene out there. There's one old theater that's been uh, redone as a jazz club. Wow. Uh, so that's a good good place to uh, take my wife. And um, uh, it's a good, it's a, it's a short enough ride where we can take an Uber out to the downtown area and get an Uber home. So we don't have to worry about driving. That's awesome. <clears throat> that yeah. sounds great. Sounds like a good place to visit. Yeah. Thank you. You're okay. welcome. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Was there something else? No, I just said you're welcome. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So underneath you is one of my favorite people, Don. Don Tallman. There you go. You're up next. Oh, hello. How are you? <laughs> That's me. Talking good to, to you. See, good to see you again, Catherine. Good to see you, Don. <laughs> um, I am Don Tallman, and... Uh, I've, I've, been, I've been a member of this group, I guess, since its beginning, more or less. And I was also a member of two groups before this. So uh, I've been struggling with COP, with, uh, what the hell is this, neuropathy for a long time. Um, but, but you're in Houston, right? So I, Oh, yes, I am here in Houston. <laughs> uh, I grew up in San Antonio, and then I... Moved all the way over here to Houston. All the way over. <laughs> so, so what good thing do you have to to tell the people about Houston? It's uh, it's big. It's getting bigger. Um, we've uh, we haven't seen the influx of people like we did back in the early '80s. Uh, <laughs> back then, half of Detroit was coming to Houston, looking for work. Um, but uh, that hasn't been so much more. I think most of the California people want to come to places like Austin and things like that. Or um, the kind of high-tech centers. Yeah. Say what? M more of the high-tech centers is where those people from the California want to go. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. Have, you, have space. Think... you have space there, though. We have space. Oh, yeah. We do, we, uh, we do yeah, have we space have... centers. Yeah. Uh, that's right, where uh, Musk is doing his new community for the stuff. Yes. OK, great. Thank you, Don. You're welcome, dear. Andrew, I have a question for Don. Yes. yes. So um, I watched the news yesterday and saw that you had a Bengal tiger running around Houston sometime. Well, I don't think it's a real big tiger. I think it's about oh, okay. a year old. Uh, and the last I saw is they, they've lost it. They don't know oh where God. it's hiding, so <laughs> you know, we, we don't have enough. We don't have enough problems with cattle along the highways. So we, now we've got a yeah. First it was a hidden. cow. Yeah, first it was a cow on the highway, and now it's a tiger in somebody's front yard. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> never, yeah, never, it's, never a dull moment. That's right. Never a dull moment here. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Don. All right, You're so welcome. now I'm going to um, I'm going. I'm going to just go pick Brian because he's another Houston person. We'll just hear from another person. 
That's right. I think I'm the, the last of the three who voted in yeah. Texas. I think so. <laughs> I'd say the, I, I, I would say the, the one little known tidbit that only us Houstonians know that our summers are significantly cooler and less humid than Southern California. Right. Really? I don't know that. I didn't, Way I didn't know that. It just seems hot. See, I got my door. <laughs> It'll be open till November. <laughs> That's a running joke with us down here in Houston. It, it has been so humid that I didn't think I'd be able to open the door. For some reason, a, a nice, cool breeze blew through. It must have come from California this morning, <laughs> and it'll, it'll be it'll be shut through November, probably starting tomorrow. Yes, all but, of our humidity will come yeah, back. It, it's coming back. It, I, that was a pretty good delivery. I thought I did that. Yeah, but, yeah that was very not, good. And not as humid as as, as, <laughs> as Missouri. I went to college in Springfield, and you could put clothes on the oh. line, and they would mold. Oh man! <laughs> oh, gross. It's, if it is worse she, than here, oh my goodness. She Gone. is absolutely right. Missouri is terrible. I went to basic training at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, <laughs> and it was. It was not a fun place. Don't call it misery for nothing. <laughs> misery. Well, my husband always tells me that Mississippi was the worst for humidity and that it was just wet all the time there. So I guess lots of places claim the worst humidity. Well, come on down for a nice cool summer. <laughs> uh, I, no, I would say the one thing for one thing for Houston for me is the barbecue. Um, oh, okay. Love the barbecue food down here. Yeah, uh, there is a lot of barbecue here. Yeah, yeah, food's That's good. <laughs> okay, all right. So, Bill, since you're next to Brian on on my pictures, I know you're not from Houston. So, Bill, where are you from? Me? Yes. Uh, I am from Richmond, Virginia, the city of the monuments. Oh. <laughs> oh. Which are which are falling down. Oh really? They're falling down? They're being taken down. Taken. Oh, they're being taken down, right, right. So All of the, Confederate the Confederate monuments monument. are being torn down. Anyway, yeah, I spent, uh, Catherine, it's your Antifa buddies who are pulling them down. Yeah. <laughs> and no politics, no politics. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I spent nine months in Richmond and three months in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, which is always one of the top 10 beaches in the country. Uh, nice. Nice. And I spent my time in a nice place called Duck, D U C K. Ah. Duck. And, and that's a town? Or that's a gonna, yeah, the Outer Banks is made up of about six towns in the Outer Banks. Okay. So it's 110 miles long. Anyway. Cool. Okay. Well, Bill is also a member of the Houston Support Group. He, he attends our meetings. So we have, um, in the Houston Support Group, Diane also is. And so we have, just because it's the Houston Support Group, we're via Zoom. So anybody can attend. So we do have people attend from all over. We so have a great is, sense of humor. Great sense of humor. A great yeah. sense of humor. Okay. What the Houston support group does? Oh, yeah, right. That's what I mean. That, I would, that was my pitch for other folks to dial in. <laughs> okay. That's true. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the pitch. All right. So how about Lolene? Oh, um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, because I can't hear you. You need some volume up, I think. Do you have some volume? No, oh, she's not. No, she's, she's, she's trying to get volume up on there. No, I still, I still can't hear you. Start. Starbucks? Yes. I can hear you now. Can you hear somebody? Lolene, I, uh-uh, I still can't hear you go. Are you just, are you on your computer or an iPad or something? 
on your iPad. Yeah, I don't know. What, I don't know what it is. We'll like try and come back to you in a little bit. See if we can get to that. Okay. How about Merle? Merle, it's nice to see you again. Yes. Hi. How are you? Fine. Yeah. How are you? Oh well, my feet are burning up. Um, it's sixty degrees in my house, and it is absolutely gorgeous outside. It's about fifty-eight or something, and in San Francisco, California, uh, we rarely have a heat problem. But during the fires last year, we had a big problem. <laughs> we had um, a big section of our state was burning up, as most of you on this call know. But San Francisco is uh, is uh, surrounded by water, except in the peninsula, so one side. And we are known for a gold rush. And our state came in 19, I mean, 1850 was made a state. So I know you're gonna talk about that later. And our people are moving to Texas and Oregon and all, I don't know about North Carolina, but, um, <laughs> We are losing population. We really. We are. We have a huge homeless uh, issue here, and uh, um, people are working at home. And our neuropathy support group is not meeting in person. Um, but we hopefully all of us are on this call. So all right. It. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Hopefully, we can start back with that in the fall. See how that works. Okay, great. Thank you, Merle. Love San Francisco, personally. It's a great place. Okay, let's see. Bretta, how about you? Where are you from? Um, Auburn, which is Northern California, <laughs> and it's the foothills, uh, the closest big city would be Sacramento. So the foothills, as you head up to Tahoe, a former gold country uh, city, small city, um, pretty. Uh, and quiet, I guess. This is about as much as you could say about it at this stage. Um, I've been attending the neuropathy group for a number of years. We have a neuropathy group, or we had, of course, up to COVID, like all of us. And, uh, and then we have not had Zoom, uh, as some of you have had. And yeah, hopefully in the fall, we'll get back again. Um, I find the, the neuropathy rather puzzling, to be honest with you. Um, and that is because my main, I guess, medical problem is a blood situation and which is too high platelets. So I'm taking um, medication for that to keep that down. Now that causes the neuropathy. If I could stop the blood one tomorrow, and I've had that for about nine years, uh, mm -hmm. if I could stop that today, the neuropathy would go. I wow. can't stop that because that's the more serious of the two. One is a result of, the other is the central scene. And as no one has an answer to the central scene, because I, I am not one that can is a candidate for stem cells, which we had a lovely talk on stem cells mm -hmm. to answer a lot of problems if you can actually uh, are a candidate for it or if it links with your particular health disease. Um, in mine isn't again, unfortunately. So I, you know, I look at it, I hear this, that, the next and the other, and I don't find anything too much that directly helps me. We have had, um, of course, like all of you had talks every month. Um, and they are talks, of course, you know, what maybe chiropractic could do for you or exercise could do for you or sure. nutrition could do for you, ancillary stuff. I mean, things that we're probably all doing anyway, uh, especially if we, have, if we have other health issues. Uh, and I certainly have been doing them all my life. So that's not an issue that I've had bad nutrition. So, uh, or bad shoes. I don't know, I could get insoles or, you know, whatever it is. So I listen with um, a certain amount of detached interest, I suppose you can say. I can honestly say that apart from maybe Sonia that we've had here, or that we have here beside me, um, who uh, did come and talk about the various um, uh, medical prescription drugs, you know, like the gabapanthins, the neuronthins, the this and that and the other of those. I'm very hesitant to get into those because it's yet another chemical stuff on top of other chemical stuff I take. 
and I'm very much holistically uh, minded. Um, Let's talk but about, can we talk uh, yeah. about this tomorrow? Oh, good, good. Yeah. So anyway, um, I did. I did. Uh, uh, hesitantly go down the road of gabapentin reasonably in a very low amount but the doctor said you know this is not going to cure you I said yes I have a jolly good idea it won't he said it may right. dull you some uh, but it won't uh, you know there's no curing of neuropathy or whatever his words were that's what I heard and I, I do feel that in fact I, I since I started about two months ago I find my memory a little off and so yeah, that does happen. So there you go. So I say it's a puzzlement. I don't know that anyone has come up with an answer. And if they have, I haven't heard it. And I'm well, all I mean, ready to tell you, you know, what this, it is. Yeah, well, just remember that you're not alone and that lots of people have idio, you know, neuropathies that there, there's no answers for how to yes. cure them yeah. or anything like that. So tomorrow, you know, mm. be sure and go to the second hour tomorrow, sure. which, which Bev is hosting. And um, people will be talking about some things that have that have helped them that are maybe outside of what the medical practice is. And maybe and you'll so find the something. Social group is always help. supportive, of course. You know. To, yeah. To, to okay. All right. Degree. So that's. Well, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So let's see. Who do I have now? So how about PK? Hello, everybody. Hello. You know, since I have a moment here. You know, I'm a newbie to West WNA. I just only joined about a few months back and I had a chance to talk to Bev a few times. I talked to Daryl and then I'll meet you, Catherine. So I just wanted to shout out, first of all, to the board members of WNA. I mean, this is God's work, you know, you're helping everybody. So thank you so much for what you do. I mean, helping us all <clears throat> hopefully become, if not better patients, definitely better people, you know. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from? So I live in a small hamlet called Los Altos, which is next to Palo Alto. Everybody knows Palo Alto yes. or San Jose. Uh, it's small enough that we have no sidewalks, no traffic street, no traffic lights, no street lights. So how's that? That's small enough. That's pretty small. <laughs> and that's in Silicon Valley. So that's, you know what I mean? For Silicon Valley, that just sounds like... Uh, Anyway, so yeah, so that's where I'm at. Uh, and uh, I used to be a fairly regular visitor to Houston, actually, until the COVID time. I was there two mm -hmm. or three times a year. So, you know, wonderful town. Uh, my good friend owns a Thai street food restaurant called Songkran in Uptown. Ah. <laughs> I used to have a favorite hangout there, you know. So that's... Anyway, uh, I don't want to take too much time, but uh, good to be here. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so who who else do I have that I have a picture for if I go? Sonia? Yeah, Sonia. So, Sonia just doesn't have her live picture on. Hi. Hi, Sonia. Hi. Can you, oh yeah, I'm driving. <laughs> That's oh, why okay. it's on safety mode. So um, anyways, uh, I just wanted to, um, Say th thank you for the gentleman, PK, I guess, who spoke, who uh, said something about the board. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, that. And um, and just saying uh, just a little comment that, you know, we've all missed um, seeing each other in our support groups. And it's nice doing this on the annual conference to find out where everybody's from. But like just hearing Brita's voice from Auburn, it, it makes me realize how much I've missed seeing her, <laughs> you know, uh, face to face in all this time. And, you know, we may all have our own challenges with the neuropathy, but it's, it's really wonderful to have Western Neuropathy Association um, to allow us to gather together um, and at least uh, feel, feel good about knowing each other. So, um, this will just help us expand that. Where do you live? <laughs> so um, I live in Roseville, California, which is just the first city east of Sacramento County on, um, on Highway 80. And um, it's, it's known for its um, being a railroad town. And <clears throat> it actually it has 
for the last uh, probably century and a half been a major ro uh, railroad hub. We even had our own huge explosion in 1973 in the railroad yard, if that makes it official. But uh, <laughs> anyways, it's uh, the railroad was a huge part of our community. My ex-husband, father and grandfather both worked for the railroad. His grandfather came from Chicago, Illinois, out here to California to work on the railroad. And, um, you know, the rest is history. His daughter met uh, Brian's dad and they, and he was working at the railroad and they got married. And so the rest is history then. And uh, now it's, uh, now it's flourished into a city of 141,000 people. It's pretty big. Wow. So, wow. Um, anyways, yeah, I was going to pharmacy school in Stockton, which is about an hour south of Sacramento. I grew up in Redondo Beach. So, uh, hi, hello to you, Mario, fellow, uh, LA South Bay person. But, um, I, I was, I was graced with the ability to, um, go home with a friend that I met in the dorms. Um, to her parents' house every other weekend when when she worked and I could get away from pharmacy school because I couldn't just, you know, go down, drive down to Redonda Beach anytime I wanted on the weekend. And we would uh, bike into Roseville and uh, all the new houses going up. And we said to each other, we, we want to live here when we grow up. Well, <laughs> guess where I bought a house? <laughs> Wow. And, I bought, when I bought, when I got, and I've been here for 32 years and I, and I love Roseville and, and um, even though I still wonder at the awesomeness of the ocean and, you know, God's grandeur of the ocean, the trees here, Sacramento is known as the city of trees and the trees just get me every time. I just, I just love the, the nature all around us in Sacramento. So I love being here. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, you, that, that's quite a, a complimentary um, statement about your area. Thank you. Okay. So let's see. So, Loleen, no, I still can't hear you. <laughs> nope. Well, at least she's consistent. She's good. Yes. No, I can't hear you. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. No, you can you can write and chat if you want to tell us where you're from. <laughs> That's all I can, I can hear. You. I'm sorry. No, no, I still can't hear you. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, so let me go and get some of these people whose pictures I don't have. So what about Richard K? Where are you calling from? I'm in LA. You're in LA. Awesome. And what what positive thing do you have to say about LA? Everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah, we have it all. <laughs> yeah, we have it all. Okay, well that's it. We all have to move to LA. <laughs> no, we don't want that. Has. Yeah, you don't want that. See, see. No. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you say. <laughs> okay, so anything specific about LA besides we have it all? No, we really do have it all. <laughs> I mean, we've got every, everything. I can't think of anything that we don't have. Uh, all right. So wait uh, a minute. All right. So what about humidity? Do you have humidity? No, that no. We don't have See? anything. That, you don't have it we all. We have. We definitely have the best weather in the entire country. There's do no you really? About it. Yes, absolutely. Well, I've lived that's a, a lot of places. Well, that's a big draw. So. Yeah, it's too big a draw. I mean, there's too, too many big people. A draw. No, there it is. There are way too many people here, and there's far too much traffic. Yes, I think we've all heard about that. I yes. mean, fortunately, there's Uber, but I mean, going across town, Forget it's it. just it can be a two-hour journey. Yeah, that's literally. I'm not yeah. kidding you. Well, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so so you don't have humidity and you don't have good traffic. You have bad traffic. So everything else is good. Yes, I don't yes. complain. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, Thanks Richard. <laughs> okay, Richard, thank you so much. All right, so what about George? George Shimabu, it, it doesn't, I don't have your whole name on my picture screen. Yeah, George Shima Bukuro. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Fairfield, California. Fairfield, California. Yes, it's home to Travis Air Force Base, uh, the Jelly Belly Company. We have had our, our support, our, our, our annual conference in, at the Jelly Belly of Center uh, twice, two years in a row. We had a great time there. That was a fun place. Yep. I liked it too. I didn't have to go, didn't have to drive. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. So who else do I have? Oh, Sally. Yeah. Sally Hearn. Where are you calling from? Where do you live? She needs to un. And, and you have to ask you to unmute because you're muted. If you want to reply, and if you don't want to reply, that's fine. There you Am go. I unmuted? Oh, yes, okay. I can hear you now. Oh, good. Um, I'm from Grass Valley, and uh, that's kind of up in Bev's country, Cold Flax, Grass Valley, Auburn. Ah. We're all part of the gold country. And I suppose Grass Valley, one of its many main claims to fame is what, you know, its most famous mine, which is the Empire Mine. Uh, I was just printing out an article the other day to share. Um, I think uh, whatever it's, you know, they were the, they pulled in the biggest amount of gold ever. And, but I forget the amount of area it covers Western United States, all of the United States, States, I would not be surprised. Uh, I think what's fascinating is that Randy and I were just, my husband, were uh, driving up by my aunt and uncles who are adjacent to part of the property. And the property is so huge uh, of the mine. And it's been made a state uh, park. And so that they've been at least able to conserve and preserve a lot. But anyway, there's 367 miles of tunnel and it goes up to a, th a, a mile down. And that's wow. a lot of levels of, um, of tunnels and a good share of Grass Valley, including where my aunt and uncle live, you know, underneath them are all these tunnels. And it just kind of makes you think if you dwelt on that a lot, it might make you kind of nervous because every <laughs> once in a while there has, you know, you hear of the freak accident. And I, I, Bev, I don't know if you remember this, but it's been quite a long time ago. It was up near Colfax somewhere where a man was laying in bed watching TV and his floor opened. And, uh, you know, one of those weak, weaker areas above mining there, there's just mining everywhere opened up and, you know, unfortunately it was, you know, he was no longer. So anyway, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Don't it's photograph it's to do positive things. <laughs> yeah. So we, you know, well, I just, I was taking pictures for my cousin um, who's uh, getting up in age like I, and I just thought she'd like to see her folks old house. They said, we drove by, looks in good shape, the whole neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I says, but it can't help but make you one think, start thinking about all those tunnels underneath, you know, and the layers that deep. So anyway, that's our claim to fame. We're sitting on a gold mine, all of us. And okay. Okay, well, then we, we want you to be very careful then with those tunnels, okay? We don't want to hear you. We're on the outside south end of town uh, on Wolf Mountain. I'm not sure that the tunnels reached us here, but the, you know, smaller time miners in those days dug everywhere. So you don't know. 
but there's a lot of big giant rocks here. And I think, boy, the, if the earthquake knocks one of these down, I wonder if to dynamite it out so we can pick up the pieces <laughs> if we might not find. So I just want you to think this may be the last you'll hear from me because oh. I'll be down at the bank cashing in, right? Oh, gosh, Sally, you're too funny. <laughs> Sally was yeah. the, le the leader of the Grass Valley group for some some while. So <laughs> yeah, and they hung in there. They never got swallowed up. So and they're right in town where they were meeting. So oh, that's good. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Sally, for telling us all about your tunnels. <laughs> Appreciate well, no, that. The unmute button is. Okay. Okay, okay. so. Marge Healy, I saw that you turned your camera on. So now since you turned your camera on, you're going to have to talk to us. But she has to unmute. You have to unmute first. Unmute, unmute. Uh, there you go. You know, please forgive me. I got caught up in doing wash. And I live in an apartment building. And the machines went out. And I've just been like crazy all day don't, don't worry, Jesse. I had, i've had you on all this time so i've listened to you as i've, I've gone along so oh, awesome. so great to hear people talk about neuropathy i have no one to talk to about it see then you need you need to come to our support groups you can come via zoom just like you're coming to this meeting uh half moon bay i live in half moon bay no you can cut just do via Zoom. We've got my support group, uh, Dr. Donovan's support group, and you can do the Nevada okay. support group. Doesn't make any difference, you know, just call, just do it on, on the computer. Okay, great. I'll, I'll yeah. do that. Because yeah, I'll do that. I have a lot of questions, but I understand that some of them will be answered tomorrow. Yes, yes. So, yeah. so you're at Half Moon Bay, that's in California, right? <laughs> I don't know. No. Yes, uh, yes. Um, I don't know. I'm in Texas. I'm landlocked. What do I know? Oh, okay, let me tell you. I'm on the coast, and it's freezing here, just like the uh, uh, what's her name said from uh, San Francisco. I've got long sleeves on, and the only reason I'm warm is that I've been running up and down stairs. Uh, but it, uh, it's it's just um, uh, I I mean I'm. I guess I should be satisfied here because this is the tourist delight. Everybody it's supposed to be to nice, yes. So That's Mar, what I've are heard. you familiar with uh, Mavericks? Yeah. They're, they're down here, right? Mavericks. Yeah. That, that's a big surf spot there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure I am. I used to live in Pacific. <laughs> I've never come to this city, but this is uh, Half Moon Bay is you know, it's we've got a lot of good restaurants, and I'm I'm not inviting you, but because you're neuropathy people, I am inviting you. <laughs> 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 because it's, <I> just, guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's so uh, it's a beautiful town, but it, okay, it's cold all the time. Fifty. Oh, degrees. really? Oh, okay. Yeah, fifty-nine degrees. It, no, it's fifty-seven in San Francisco and fifty-seven in Half Moon Bay right now. According right. to my, my iPhone. <laughs> yeah, Merle, we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's awesome. Okay, Marge, thank you so much for um, tuning in with us today. And remember, you can go to any of the uh, virtual support groups. You can join us and talk uh, with other people about neuropathy. Okay, okay? you're listed in the newsletter. Right? It's listed in the newsletter and on the website. Okay. So all of them are on there, yes. So we hope to see you, All okay? Right, thank you. Thank okay. You. So next I see Nona. Nona, can you unmute yourself and tell us where you're calling from? I am uh, Nona from Arizona. I'm Nona uh, from Arizona. <laughs> yeah. And right. uh, originally born and raised in Phoenix, so I'm a Phoenician, a native actually. Uh, and... Uh, been here for over 60 or over 50 plus years. Um, let's see. Uh, what can I say about Arizona? It's hot. It's, it's 100 awesome. degrees. <laughs> so, okay. uh, so, so we just had the cold and now we have the exact opposite with the hot. Yeah. Uh, well, 100 degrees today and uh, still climbing. I think by July and August, it'll be clear into the 
uh, late uh, teens and early 20s. So. Oh my gosh. Yes, that's that's too hot. You can move move someplace else where it's cooler. <laughs> A lot of snowbirds do. So uh, I bet, I bet. Okay. Uh, I have one quick question. Um, I just found out about you through a, another Zoom meeting that talked about neuropathy support group. And I did not know you had a the medical portion of this or you have a your conference that's going on right now. Can someone send me a link so I can uh, listen to tomorrow uh, so, what's going on? So it's the exact same link that you had for today. Okay. And okay. so I can uh, check in for the uh, speakers that are speaking yes. then. Yes. Okay. So it would, yeah. And it's at the same time. So, so what is that? That's still at one o'clock. Are you still the same time zone as California? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. right now Pacific. We, we don't change. Okay. We're just like one of those states that, you know, <laughs> it was the last state of the mainland states to join the union. So we're a little pokey about everything. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if it's um, if you got in today, you can get in uh, to tomorrow and on also on Friday the, the same. And it's at one o'clock uh, Pacific time. So I, mean, I know we have people co coming in at all different. Uh, for people on the East Coast, it's four o'clock. So um, and it yeah. Thank you yeah. for your warm welcome. Okay. Thank you. Glad glad to meet you, Nona. Glad you found us. Okay, so is that, let's see, I, I only have, it looks like I have one person left um, because most people are getting off. So Helene Greenberg, do you want to unmute yourself and tell us where you're calling from? Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Helene, where, where are you from? I'm from Reno, Nevada. Another Nevada. And, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And um, let's see, I was uh, diagnosed with small fiber. Well, okay, yeah, but, but we're, we're not talking about our neuropathy right now. Right now, we're just talking about our cities. So okay. it's, do well, you have anything? Reno, Reno yeah. is growing. We're almost half a million people now. And so we're getting some of the big city issues, a lot of uh, development, um, unfortunately. And... Uh, I don't know what else to say. It's uh, still, I've lived here 45 years. So uh, it's not the city that it was, but it's still a good place to live. Okay. Well, hey, can't get any better than that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so, all right. Thank you so much for being with us today. You're okay. welcome. And so for all of y'all, I just want to remind you again that we do have our virtual support groups. We have two of them that are ongoing. And so anybody can attend those. It doesn't make any difference where you live. You can live in Half Moon Bay. You can live in Virginia and North Carolina. You can find those on the website or in the newsletter. Okay. Um, Catherine, Catherine, real quick. I have, I have two more, I have two more um, um, door prizes, but yes, Brian, yeah. what, what Brian, did I do? As, as your, as your lovely assistant this afternoon. I, ha I had one more person on my list. Oh, okay. Sorry. Who did I miss? It, uh, Jeff Dyer. Yes. That's my husband. Oh, that's your husband. Oh, well, that's why I had it on my You didn't <laughs> tell me his name. Oh, okay. No, I know. He's I'm not 100% say then. You're good. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. And uh, something right. happened oh. to, to Dr. Yeah. Don Donovan. I don't see him. I know. I think he left. He was he was here before, but then when I got around, he had already been gone. So um, yeah. All right. And what about if we take one more minute? Who has a birthday for October thirty first, which is the date that Nevada joined the joined the United States? Anybody left around October thirty first? Halloween, October or November? November. September or December? November. November. November what date? 10. November 10th. Who was that that said that? Nona. Oh, Nona. All right. Nona. 
you're not a member, so you need to give me your mailing address so we can send you your door prize. Why don't you just okay. have, Nona, why don't you just call me? It's 877. Can, can you, uh, Bev, can you put that in the chat? Can you yes. see, it? see it there? It's Yes. It's um, 877. Six two two six two nine eight. Now that's a toll free number, Bev. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. It's our our, our neuropathy Western Neuropathy Association association number. Community. So did you press enter on that? Did you send it to everybody, or did you just send it to Nona? Well, I can uh, press enter on it. I, I just sent it to. Now everybody has it, but. It's on the web and it's on our newsletter. There it is. Okay, great. It's yes, all, yes. They call me and then I can get the information on how to, where to send it. Uh, that's sixty-two ninety-eight. Okay, I got it. Yes. Okay. Thank you all. I'm done. Daryl, you have one more. You have one more. You have, well, I do, but I don't know if y'all want me to take the time. Do you want me to do one more door prize? Sure. Okay, all right. The last door prize date, May 12th, which is today's date. Who has a birthday today or around in May? All right, Don, when's your birthday? May 15th. Oh, well, I think you're pretty close. So, okay. Well, Lorreen, uh, Lorreen, did you have a birthday in May? Anybody else a birthday in May? Did was I, I didn't see. Lolene, if you did, you're going to have Catherine? Yes? Catherine? Yes? I'm it's listening. Tanya. My, 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 dad's, my dad's birthday is today, and he has neuropathy. Does that count? No, <laughs> it does not. <laughs> <laughs> Good try, Sonia, but no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 going to call me, and we're going to talk, and, and, we'll, we'll find, and, and we'll find out. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do Don Tallman is going to be the winner for our third prize. Yay, me. Yay. Yay, you. Okay, and I can get your address, Don. Okay. All right. Okay, now I'm done. Oh. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you. Catherine, did you say You're you welcome. needed my address? Yes, but I will get it from you later. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank, thank you for leading. Yeah. Enjoyed this. Thank you. Yeah, Lots Thank of fun. You. Very Thank good. You so much. Good. Thank you. More, we'll talk about neuropathy. So uh, before we leave, let me just say thank you for all of the board members of the Western Neuropathy Association. And remember that this week is Neuropathy Awareness Week. So I want you to actively be ready to tell people that neuropathy is the name for diseases in the peripheral nervous system and what your experience with it is like. Please remember to join us tomorrow at the same time, one o'clock on um, Pacific time. And we have um, a, we have two uh, items on the agenda. One will be from Dr. Mashi, um, many, many, anyway, Dr. Korb will be talking about approaches to neuropathy. And then we'll have a discussion group to talk about uh, neuropathy and what each of us do to help you know, get through it every day. And then on Friday, we'll talk, uh, Barbara Montgomery will speak on nutrition and we'll also have a yoga session. So again, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow and have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. So I'll be Bye. on time tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.